So we have a 2005 Bounder RV made by Fleetwood and it uses an oddball radio. So today our object is to take it out, put in this Pioneer, it's a DIN 1.0 and fill the gap underneath it. And I've got this piece here which I'm going to make modifications. This is a DIN 2 to DIN 1 adapter and we're going to cut it down and modify it and make this work. Let's get started. First thing you need is these two little adapters. Now if you can't get these, you can make them out of a piece of wire or something. You just push them both in. With respect to the holes, push them in as they go in hard. Grab the head, pull it out. Pull easy because the wires might not be that way. Move the antenna. And then remove the Molex connector. You might have to pull the two pins apart here to get it to go. That's good. Wiggle it around a little and it'll go. Oh, here it is. There we go. Toss, don't toss this thing out though because you need it. On here it gives you all the wire pinout for your different connections. There is no adapter made for these. This Molex connector on here is not a standard GM one. You can those units made by GM on it. It's a uh, it's an oddball. So shove your wires back in. Now there's little tangs in here which are bent over and you have to pull them out. Take this bracket, toss it aside, you don't need it anymore. We've got our DIN to 2 to DIN 1 adapter. We want to put it in the pocket at the bottom. It almost fits. This adapter plate, by the way, is, I'll show you the package, made by a company called Metra, and it's a 99-3301, it's a General Motors multi-kit for ISO mounts. You might find a better mount than what I did, because this is not going to work, obviously. So I think the first thing to do is we're going to cut the plastic off the top here and go from there. That's the idea, and then this Pioneer receiver comes with this cage, which I want to mount over top of that. As you can see, we still got issues with bolts. There's a metal inside plate here, and then this plastic is just on the surface. The plastic here is a little bit um, above here, so if I just take that plastic off without touching the metal, I'm hoping I can just uh, fit it in at that point. Otherwise, we got to do a little cutting up here, get into some of that metal as well. That's a little more difficult. The thing we have to do here is just get a good idea where all the wires are, so we're not going to cut it. And I've got a good six, seven inches back here. I don't have to worry about any wires here. Now I'm going to pick a reciprocating saw blade that's not long, too long. So even if I screw up, it's not going to get back into the wiring. Made up a little spacer here to ride this on so it cuts level and I don't have to worry about it so much. like me and you have both 18 and 20 volt DeWalt tools this little adapter here I think it was under $40 adapts the newer 20 volt batteries 
to the 18 volt reciprocal cause. This battery's not gonna wear out. If you notice the face plate here comes right up against that metal piece there from the, the fold. So I obviously have to have that on the front of this. It's, it has to go in like has to go in like that. Now we're going to square up the adapter, drill the pilot holes into the metal chassis, and screw it securely into place. Now it's time to mount the cage into the opening, and a little tweaking here and there just to catch us better. You see a little piece of wood there, it's a little spacer. I didn't want to just trust the main mounting method, I wanted something to stop it from bouncing. So a little piece of wood wasn't going to stay in place, it was going to fall out, so I drilled a little hole in the wood. Bend the tab down, keeps the piece of wood in place. To secure the cage in place, there's little tabs you bend over. So I bend a few over, just to hold it in place so I could try one last test fit. Constantly be testing the radio for fits as you go along, just to make sure you don't go get yourself in trouble. Now that the mounting is complete, just a quick clean up, and then it's time to start the electrical. Now, the reason I'm replacing this was one to update it and get Bluetooth and all that kind of stuff, but the other thing was the left front speak drive amp wasn't working. And the reason I'm sure of that is because I switched around speakers at the front here from left to right and it was still the left channel. So there's one other possibility besides the amp and that is that there's a short in the wiring. So before I go and hook up this brand new amp to it, I want to make sure that I'm not going to blow the new one. Left front speaker, white, that's positive, and front left speaker, minus is the black and white. I temporarily removed a lead from the speaker and tested it for a short. Then I hooked it back up again and tested it for continuity. All was good so I was safe to continue. The next step is to connect the pigtail from the new amp to the existing wiring. Read your manual for your new amp and get the proper pinout to match the wiring diagram on the old radio. One wire at a time, match ground to ground. 12 volts to 12 volts, then continue with all the output wires for the speakers. The new pigtail had very thin wires and using crimp connectors wouldn't have worked. Soldering was the only way. At this point it might be tempting to try the amp out before you tape off your connections. Don't try it though, you might end up with a blown amp with no warranty. Now with the wiring safely sealed off, we can plug in the antenna and the main cable and try it out. Success! We have power. Without thinking, I put in a CD right away to test it. And of course it's got copyright music on it, so I can't play it for you because I'd have a copyright strike against the channel then. With the harness fully taped up, the next step is installing the microphone for Bluetooth commands and voice calls. Routing the wire so there'll be no contact to the steering column or other moving parts. Make final connections for your antenna, power, and the microphone lead. Slide the head in halfway. Do one final test before you push it home. I'll just move the camera over here to show you how it worked out. Now these four screws right here that are chrome, I will either change them out to black or I'll tell you another little trick. Take a black magic marker and just hit them and they just disappear. They blend right in. But all in all, I'll get the Bluetooth working and everything and I'll be quite happy. Thank you very much for watching.